Hey guys, it's Andres again. Today is the first day of week two of our build and our first glamping site. So today Chelsea took the kids to Knoxville, I think the Children's Museum. So I'm gonna be working on building the beams that are gonna go across the roof. And for that, I'm gonna use some two by sixes and two by eights that we took down from the barn yesterday. So I need to build roughly 24 foot long beams. I need to make three of them. They gotta be pretty strong because that's a, that's a long span to go. Basically, they're gonna go right here this way and they're gonna carry on top the post that we also took down from the barn yesterday. And on top of that, I'm gonna put some two by fairing to hold the polycarbonate roof. I took my measurements again. The patio is right about 21 feet on width. And I wanna make sure I go on both sides over a little bit to give it a bit of an overhang. Because what's gonna happen up here, there's not gonna be any wall. It's just gonna be open to the air and I don't want the rain and the wind to come in when there's a big storm. So I'm thinking to go with 25 feet for our beams. If anything, if I gotta cut it shorter, I can do that once I install them or when I, when I bring them over here. I went ahead and I picked my lumber over here. I tried to take some nails out and make sure they're all pulled one way. And then right here, I have laid out what would be my first 25 foot beam. So basically I'm using a 14 foot piece, an 11 foot piece, and then I'm splicing it together with a 10 foot piece. And I think that should be enough nails and support so that it basically becomes one long 25 foot beam. Now the only trick is typically when you put a, a ceiling joist or a, even a floor joist, you want to look at that crown, it's that belly of the wood. Typically wood will either bend one way or the other. So you want to look at that wood, see which way it's bending, and you always do the belly up with the idea that then you're going to put weight and it's going to try to straighten it out. Now this wood doesn't have a lot of belly, but maybe I'm going to try to create a little bit of a belly. When I, when I nail them together, I'm going to create a little bit of a of a peak and then later when I put all the other roofing material on top it should bring it down a little bit. I'm not sure if that's gonna work but we'll give it a try and see how it goes. I've been using a 15 foot pole to dislodge all the other poles that are up high because all of them have like a four inch nail but if I hit it a couple times I loosen them up and then I just push them around until they fall but now I'm trying to take the big uh, cedar post the two big columns and then there's some two by sixes running so I'm gonna see if I can knock that down see how it goes Stop it. Get some help. Another one. Another one. I got one more column. It's like a serious shoulder workout right now. But one big more, one more big column. 
And then about six more of the little posts that go across. But this place looks so much bigger already and so open. It'll turn into something nice someday. I'm done, <laughs> pretty much. There's still, there's still a few left in the very high corners. Uh, there's some diagonal braces and they're really tough to get out. So for now, I'm gonna leave them there. I'm really happy with this look. Um, yes, love that journey for me. A lot less stuff and you can actually just see the actual barn, not just all this extra lumber right there. Now I definitely got sidetracked from my beam project today by demoing more of the barn. I got to do a second beam. I need one more, so I'll probably try to do that later tonight. The hole is done. It's about a foot deep, six feet long, two feet wide. The bathtub is in there, nice and flat. I do need to keep a little bit of a slope towards this side because I want the water to easily drain uh, my drain. My drain is actually my next project. I'm gonna be digging that hole. Basically, it's gonna go from the bathtub all the way down to the grass over there. So I'm gonna dig it up. Luckily, the lot, it's already sloping that way. So not much to worry about the slope, but uh, the digging, it's actually kind of hard, even though it's a lot of dirt. If it isn't Dirty Joe dirt. It's no, no, there's no rock. It's still pretty hard to dig this, dig this dirt. So I'm not looking to do the drain for the bathtub. And I went to the hardware store and I bought this. This is meant for a shower, uh, but basically what I'm looking to do is somehow drain the bathtub <laughs> without creating any type of ring on the inside, prevent the water from actually going into the drain. I'm gonna put this underneath and from the top, I'll drive some screws to this phalange. And then I'm gonna go with a two inch elbow and then it's gonna go to a two inch pipe. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some plumber putty on this drain, keep it from leaking. So the idea is to basically put it around so, it, so then it can, it can get smashed when I put the screws through here. And this will create a seal. By the way, if you're thinking I'm crazy by doing this, this what's underneath your shower, your sink, this stuff is used a lot. It stays flexible over time and it really works very well. I was surprised the first time I used it that this how actually plumbing stuff got sealed. So it's actually really difficult with one person to drill and hold this and everything. So I'm gonna try to mark this and drill it with a drill bit and then put it in. Uh, see if that works. Here's the finished product. You can see all the putty that's squeezed out of there. That's what it looks like. Okay, now we're ready to start more of the fun part, more productive part. That took a long time. I would recommend two people. It's kind of hard to reach over. Um, that was kind of took forever. So now I'm just gonna start gluing, priming, gluing everything and start putting my, my drain pipe. It was a tough day with the kids, so trying to get this done at night, but um, they went to bed super late. So it's now 10.30 p.m. and I'm gonna put some dirt back into this pipe so I can do something else tomorrow. And 
night construction continues on but right now I dug myself a little trench for my water supply line it's all gonna be CPVC and then I'm building my own mixer valve basically one of these is gonna be cold one of these the hot it would have been really nice if I would have found a blue one at Lowe's unfortunately they only had red but maybe in the future I can replace the handle so one is blue and one is red that would be really nice uh, these pieces can get kind of expensive uh, the elbows about two dollars a piece these little nipples what? Uh, two to three to four dollars for this longer one so this whole thing it was probably about twenty five dollars so not terrible compared if you were to go buy a faucet you easily pay twenty five bucks for it Today I'm working on covering up all the plumbing with this wooden box. Uh, again, just grabbing some scraps, looking for some cool pieces that have some stuff grown. And that's gonna be it with some screws. So if in the future I need to check on something, I can take a look in there. And then I made this little kind of tabletop. I guess you could put drinks or whatever while you're in the tub. And I made the holes so the valves go through. So basically you can't see any of the plastic, you can only see the metal, the galvanized metal and the brass valve. And now I can glue everything together. I'm, I'm gonna get started with the sauna and the shower. The idea is to incorporate this window. This window is four foot three by four foot three. That's the idea, to build basically a box, six foot by four foot, it's gonna be the dimension. And then the shower is going to be right next to it. The idea is to walk from the shower into the sauna if you want to. And there's going to be a door right there. So the plan is now to get the cast iron stove set in place in the sauna area. Because once I build stuff around it, that stove is not going to fit. It's pretty big and it is extremely heavy. I picked it up for $100 a couple weeks ago. Uh, there was a young guy there helping me out and we were both trying to muscle that thing onto the trailer and it took a lot of work. Um, I'm guessing it's about 500 pounds. Like, it is the, probably the heaviest thing I have ever had to move. So there it is, it's in place. It's pretty level. I just cleaned out all the ashes. And after lunch, I can get going in the wall here. And I'm thinking the roof is gonna be a clear polycarbonate roof. Uh, so it's gonna have a ton of light because you're gonna have this four x four window. The whole roof is gonna be clear as well. Uh, and then I'm thinking I'm gonna have to put pavers or concrete bricks around the stove, just so it doesn't radiate so much heat to the, to the wood nearby. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. We are Andres and Chelsea. We uprooted our lives from Arizona to Eastern Tennessee. We sold our long-term rentals and are putting everything on the line to start our dream glamping business. Join us each week as our family navigates this big new adventure and we share everything we learn so you can also build a successful glamping business.